welcome all. I look out and see many family, friends, and staff members today who are very, very dear, near and dear to me. But for those of you who I have not yet met, my name is Ken Koshansky. It is my privilege to serve as Senior Vice President for the Health Sciences at Stony Brook University and Dean of our outstanding medical school. It gives me great pleasure today to serve as Master of Ceremonies as we install Dr. Ramin Parsi, Professor and Chair of the Department of Psychiatry, as well as Director of Pet Imaging and Research at Stony Brook, as the Della Pietra Family Endowed Chair in Biomedical Imaging. Today is truly a day of celebration as we expressed our profound thanks to the Della Pietra family, to Pam and Stephen and Barbara and Vincent who are here with us today, and their highly accomplished F1 progeny, Ava and Donald and Emily. And as we honor Dr. Ramin Parsi as the Della Pietra family chair in biomedical imaging, whose accomplishments and accomplishments yet to come have and will bring great pride to Stony Brook University and Stony Brook Medicine. First, let me look back about five years ago when a new dean of the Stony Brook School of Medicine showed up and was immediately, let me emphasize, immediately asked to construct a 10-year strategic plan for the school. Thank you, Sam. Despite the challenge that that presented, one aspect of our strategic plan that was an absolute no-brainer was biomedical imaging. So we set our sights on developing a world-class imaging program, bringing both outstanding tools and even more importantly, outstanding imaging investigators to Stony Brook to realize that strategic goal. I first met Pam and Stephen and Barbara and Vincent soon after arriving at Stony Brook and continue to kindle our friendship at summer barbecues and several dinners in Oldfield and Northport. But one very early dinner stands out at our new home a few weeks after we moved in. It was a lovely spring dinner about eight months after our arrival at Stony Brook with the four de la Pietras and Jim and Robin Hernstein also in attendance. And through that dinner, I quickly learned of their quantitative view of life. In fact, they really defined for me the term quant as it, per, as it permeated everything that evening. As but one example, take their humor. At that first dinner together, I was sharing that our daughter attended a truly nerdy college where the male to female ratio was described as pi, 3.1415 dot 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 an amazingly important number for geometry. Well, that triggered the next 10 minutes of humor around the table as a series of pi jokes were shared. Come on, jokes about the number pi? Let me turn now to the moment about three years ago when the idea of the Della Pietra family chair in biomedical imaging was born. Barbara and Vincent and Pam and Stephen were at Sunwood having a very nice dinner with Sam and Ellen and Lauren and me. As I recall it, between the salad and the main course, we began to speak about how the family might help build excellence at Stony Brook. I suggested that since imaging is a major growth area in biomedicine, is front and center in our strategic plan, and Sam suggested the field is becoming a hugely quantitative science, helping us bring to Stony Brook a rising star in biomedical imaging would make a great deal of sense. So let me turn now to the business at hand, the installation of Dr. Ramin Parsi as the Della Pietra family chair. As Dean of the School of Medicine, I considered it a major victory when we were successfully recruited Ramin to Stony Brook from Columbia University, where he had served as Professor of Clinical Psychiatry and Director of the Brain Imaging Facility. In his short years here so far, Ramin has transformed both imaging and pit research within the Department of Psychiatry and all across the School of Medicine. Ramin received his medical degree and PhD in biophysics from the University of Maryland at Baltimore, performed a residency and chief residency in psychiatry at Duke University, a clinical fellowship in psychiatry at Columbia, and a research fellowship 
in the Department of Neuroscience in the Division of Brain Imaging at the New York State Psychiatric Institute in New York City. Ramin is an extremely successful academic biological psychiatrist. In fact, it was Ramin who first introduced me to that term, biological psychiatry. His scholarly work focuses on depression and dementia, utilizing advanced tools such as positron emission tomography, magnetic resonance, and other cutting edge brain imaging technologies to better understand the origins of these common devastating diseases and to predict the response of such patients to existing and novel treatments. Ramin has contributed to over 130 journal articles and book chapters appearing in the American Journal of Psychiatry, the Journal of Medicinal Chemistry, the Ju Journal of Nuclear Medicine, and yes, a journal called Biological Psychiatry. As department chair, Ramin has transformed the clinical, educational, administrative, and research missions of the department here at Stony Brook. Seemingly unfazed by his administrative role or his move from that minor school, Columbia, on that little island to our west, Manhattan, Ramin continues to make huge personal scholarly strides since his arrival at Stony Brook. And Ramin is an excellent clinician, being board certified in both neurology and psychiatry and attending here at Stony Brook Medicine. In fact, he is quickly becoming a doctor's doctors with over 30 physicians as patients. Is there something I have to worry about, Ramin? And that is only half the story. The other half, as Ramin is here with his lovely spousal, Dr. Gaten Buzain, bringing balance to the entire Parsi family. It is now my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Samuel L. Stanley, Jr., the fifth president of Stony Brook University, who will share why days like today are so vitally important to the pursuit of excellence in a major research-intense university such as ours. Sam. So thank you so much, Ken, and it really is a, a pleasure to be here today. Um, I, I want to begin by adding my welcome to the Della Pietra and Parsi families, as well as all the friends and family members here today, uh, and my faculty, friends, and colleagues in the audience as well. Um, and I want to take a moment, as Ken said, to reflect a little bit about the importance of today's event. We're gathered today to honor Pam and Stephen Della Pietra, Barbara Amundsen and Vincent Della Pietra, and Ramin Parsi. And that's absolutely as it should be. Endowed chairs are lasting tributes, both to the generous donors who established them and are a time-honored means of attracting eminent scholars and retaining outstanding faculty. Since the first endowed chair was established in 1502, when Margaret of Richmond, mother of Henry VII, established the Lady Margaret Professorship of Divinity at the University of Oxford, they have been the hallmark of great universities. The creation of endowed professorships and chairs enables Stony Brook to compete with our aspirational peers for the best and the brightest faculty. And I'm extremely proud that over the past six years, the number of endowed chairs and professorships at Stony Brook has increased more than sevenfold. We have now funded 42 endowed chairs and professorships and are well on our way to reaching our goal of 100 endowed faculty positions by June 2018. Moreover, I'm extremely grateful to the Della Pietra family for their significant philanthropic support, which has established this chair and much more at Stony Brook. Here at Stony Brook, we can't achieve our goal of being one of the best public universities in the world without the generosity of close friends like the Della Pietra family. The very best scholars want to pursue discovery and innovation at an institution which provides them with the resources to reinvent the future. As you heard from Ken, Dr. Amin Parsi is a leading scholar in the field of biomedical imaging, adding to Stony Brook's storied legacy in imaging research. Here, Dr. Paul Lauterbur conducted his research for the development of the MRI, for which he received the Nobel Prize in 2003. And I have the pleasure of admiring that Nobel Prize every day in my office, as it was so graciously donated to Stony Brook University by the Lauterbur family. And here, along with scientists working at our affiliated institution, Brookhaven National Laboratory, four more of the greatest imaging advances were created. 
Building on Paul Lauterbur's legacy, Dr. Parsi's dynamic research is advancing biomedical imaging technology. We are so proud to have him as a member of our faculty. Ken and Ramin, will you please join me at the podium? Ramin, it is my distinct privilege to confer upon you the title of Della Pietra Family Endowed Chair in Biomedical Imaging and present you with this certificate, which reads, Stony Brook University proudly recognizes your outstanding contributions in teaching and research, honors your exemplary service to the field of psychiatry, and acknowledges the distinction you bring to the university by appointing you the Della Pietra Family Endowed Chair in Biomedical Imaging. Established in 2013 through the generosity of Pamela Hearst Della Pietra and Stephen Della Pietra and Barbara Amundsen and Vincent Della Pietra, this chair enables the university to recognize a world-class scholar and educator in the School of Medicine. Presented at a ceremony in investiture, February 29th, 2016. Can everyone hear me back there? All right, great. So I'd like to thank my stylist, my producer, the Academy for this great award. <laughs> <clears throat> sorry, I had the wrong speech, sorry. That was for the uh, speech for best supporting actor in an academic center. Um, <laughs> thank you, Ken and Dr. Stanley, for this uh, tremendous uh, award, and I really appreciate the kind words. And it's so wonderful to see so many of my friends and colleagues now, uh, after these short years, uh, here in attendance today. So our goal simply is to develop one of the world's most productive and innovative imaging centers. And people often ask why. And I can give you a number of different stories, but uh, the one that I think that moves me the most was uh, when I was a resident, as a second year resident at, uh, in psychiatry. And we did an intake, um, a young woman, she's about 26, very well dressed, poised, groomed, came in, gave her story. She had lost interest and wasn't sleeping well and her appetite had dropped. And, basically met all the criteria for major depressive disorder, which we see very commonly. And so we spoke with her and uh, started her on medication. I introduced her to her therapist, who she would see in two days for follow-up, and did everything we, we could, really, to set her up and asked all the right questions, did the right evaluation. So she left the intake with her appointment coming in two days and went home that night and committed suicide. And I say that now. It's, it's a difficult story to tell, but it's something that we would deal with uh, unfortunately, commonly. So in medicine, many things are getting better, but suicide rates are actually going up. So it made me pause and think, I don't understand the illness. Uh, I don't understand the suicide. I don't understand the treatments and how they work. And I don't understand, most importantly for her, how I could find something in her that would tell me how much risk she was at. And I still can't do that. And so the story I tell you in psychiatry is the same story I could tell you in medicine. So in a cardiology, when someone comes in, when I know someone's at imminent risk? In oncology, how do I understand this tumor, whether it's gonna be treated with drug A or drug B? How do I predict response, right? These are all questions that I think imaging uniquely can help us with. So, um, my colleagues and I, we use imaging to look inside people, right? That's what we do. We use radio waves, sound waves, uh, particle accelerators, high field magnets, whatever we can to peer inside to understand what's going on, right? What are the illnesses? How do we treat them better? How do we predict response? Uh, to get here, uh, I've had the privilege of working with some tremendous friends and colleagues. Um, obviously, I wouldn't be here doing this if it were not for the generous gift of the Della Pietra family. So over the last months, I guess now in years, uh, I've had the privilege of getting to know you and work with you. Uh, Stephen, Vincent, Barbara, and Pan. Uh, both, you've all been supportive and enthusiastic about imaging at Stony Brook. We've had great conversations over this. Uh, you've been ex you're extremely bright, generous, motivated people, and you've shown a lot of confidence in our abilities to get this work done here. So please join me in thanking them for this incredible <laughs> gift. <laughs> and
and then the leadership at Stony Brook. So we got here and it was a bumpy start by many accounts. Things weren't going exactly as we had planned. Uh, and despite that, Dr. Stanley, Dr. Kishansky stuck through all those travails. And uh, rather than back away from the investments made, they doubled down. And so I'd like to please join me in thanking them for their support to get all this all done. So I'll tell you a little bit about where we are and where we're going, because a lot of people ask what, what's happening now at Stony Brook. So our current capabilities. So right now, with the Lorries, who hopefully are here today, we have a combined magnetic resonance imaging device, MRI, uh, with PET positron emission tomography. So we can do both of these incredible modalities in one device. And that's when, at the time, was one of the first few in the world that was installed and working. The Melters have funded us to do motion correction algorithms uh, in people who have a lot of motion during PET MRIs. Peter Smith Jones and I have built up the first uh, radio pharmacy lab where we can produce radio tracers for injection into human. That's up and running, I'm happy to say. Chrissy Lorenzo and I have built the first image acquisition and lab, uh, acquisition and analysis lab so we can take this data and, and analyze it in the best ways. In the near future, we're going to have even more. So the balls have given very generously for a combined cyclotron, particle accelerator, plus radio tracer production facilities. So there'll be two. Uh, the capabilities are tremendous. We'll have three additional imaging bays in addition to the PET MRI to have PET, MRI, and CAT scanning capabilities, some simultaneous. And with these amazing gifts, um, we've also had tremendous collaborators scientifically to make use of these gifts. And so as many of you are here today, so we've worked already with uh, Dr. Javed Butler in heart disease. We've had several nice conversations about how we can use these imaging modalities in cardiac illnesses. Yusuf Anhum, Patty Thompson, Alison Stopek, Min Singh Choi, the list goes on of uh, colleagues in oncology we're working already with. Ken Choi, who's sitting with me as well. Um, we talked with Bettina Fries and Peter Tong in looking at pet imaging and in infectious diseases. We've had several conversations with Dennis Choi, who I'm happy to see here as well. Um, Andy Goldfine and others about uh, brain imaging uh, in particular. Uh, we've talked with Rory Pryor and uh, Laura Kunkel about using imaging and obesity, uh, a rising epidemic in the country. Uh, Lauren Krupp and Chrissy Lorenzo and, mul and multiple sclerosis. And that's just a small list to give you a, an idea of where we've gone and what we've done and the time that we've had these opportunities. We've started a research track specifically in psychiatry. We've applied for funding to do fellow training in imaging. In, in, uh, imaging. And now we are going to have a start an invited lecture series to bring people in to help disseminate information and, and share all the knowledge that we're gaining through this technology. Finally, modern science and medicine uh, is a group effort. It's a team effort. It's a little ridiculous for me to stand up here and take uh, credit for this. Uh, it takes a huge army of people working together to get this done, clinicians and scientists from all walks of life. Uh, so let me thank a few of those people. I want to thank my mom for her strength and wisdom for all the years of uh, eternal positiv positivity and optimism. Uh, my wife, Gayton, who is the love of my life and my best friend. My father, who couldn't make it here. So those of you who know, we had scheduled this some months back, and the day before uh, the first attempt at this, my father passed, sadly. But I see bits of him and me, the best bits, and I see bits of him and my sons, and so his memory goes on for us. Uh, we have five kids, two could make it today. They are endless sources of fascinating conversation, enthusiasm, and they ground me. <laughs> I can't get too big for my britches with these guys around. Uh, Chrissy, without whom I couldn't have done any of this, and she knows that. Uh, Todd Ogden, who thinks I have his back, but he actually has mine most of the time. I hope he's here as well. Uh, the Department of Psychiatry, who's housed me and supported all this effort for all this time, which has been uh, just uh, challenging at times and especially Michelle, who makes my everyday work. Without her, I wouldn't be able to do a thing. Uh, Dr. Pasternak in the hospital for supporting these endeavors, which are costly. <laughs> and the list could go on, but I think the music will start playing, and that little hook will come, and they'll drag me off. So uh, in conclusion, uh, I accept this gift on, the, on behalf of my numerous scientific and clinical colleagues, collaborators, postdocs, and finally, my graduate students are here, uh, who make life every single day much more fun exciting and rewarding. So thank you very much for the honor. Appreciate it.
So as I mentioned earlier, um, Stony Brook University cannot achieve our goal of becoming one of the best public universities in the world without the generosity of close friends like the Della Pietra family. And it bears repeating. We are so lucky, so lucky, that our good friends, Pamela Hurst Della Pietra and Stephen Della Pietra, and Barbara Amundsen and Vincent Della Pietra, have chosen to believe in and invest in Stony Brook University. In an age of declining federal and state support for research in public institutions in general, philanthropy provides our margin for excellence. And it is critical to achieve success in our mission. From the Simon Center for Geometry and Physics, where we're here today, to the Global Health Institute, to the Stoller Center, and the Laurie Center for Pediatric MS, from the College of Arts and Sciences Teaching and Education Fund, to the Children's Hospital Task Force, where Pam served for many years, from a supporting a visiting professor in the music department, to creating a weekend program for gifted high school students in math and science, from student scholarships to the Della Pietra Lecture Series, and now to the Della Pietra Family Endowed Chair in Biomedical Imaging, the philanthropy and service of the Della Pietra Family has literally reached every corner of the university. Stephen, Vincent, Pam, and Barbara, your family's name and legacy will forever be linked with Stony Brook, and we are absolutely honored that you have chosen to give us this distinction. Could you please join me at the podium with Ken? It is my great privilege to present you with this certificate, which reads, with deep gratitude, Stony Brook University recognizes your extraordinary generosity and splendid support of excellence in teaching, research, and scholarship at Stony Brook, reflected in your establishment of the Della Pietra Family Endowed Chair in Biomedical Imaging. Established in 2013, the Della Pietra Chair enables the university to recognize a world-class scholar and educator in the School of Medicine. Presented at a ceremony of investiture, February 29th, 2016. Again, congratulations. And now Stephen and Vincent will say a few words. Okay. Thank you, Sam and Ken and Ramin for your kind words and uh, for this wonderful ceremony. And thank you everyone for coming. Especially we should thank uh, Marilyn and Jim Simons and the Simons Foundation for their extraordinary generosity. Their match doubled the impact of our gift. Uh, Vincent, Pam, Barbara, and I are delighted to be here. Uh, we are proud to further Stony Brook's mission by endowing the first chair in biomedical imaging at Stony Brook Medicine. Uh, throughout the years, our families have become increasingly involved with Stony Brook University, not only because of its extraordinary academic programs, but also because it is an engine for economic vitality uh, in the area. And we are, um, in fact, uh, it was ranked number one. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was ranked number one in a recent survey of, of universities in the Northeast for return on investment. Uh, given what Vincent and I do during our day jobs, it probably doesn't surprise many of you that this would appeal to us. <laughs> Uh, biomedical engineering is a new frontier in healthcare. It's an exciting synthesis of mathematics, physics, and medicine, uh, very similar to the statistical pattern recognition that Vincent and I have researched throughout our careers. Uh, we are proud to support Stony Brook's role in biomedical engineering and in neuroscience. Uh, and Dr. Parsi, we greatly admire your groundbreaking research, and we are truly honored that you are the inaugural holder of our chair. Thank you.
So thank you again. And let me in close uh, these ceremonies by inviting all of our guests to stay for a reception in the lobby and close the ceremonies with, a quota with two quotations from two of my very favorite historical figures. The first, very fittingly, is a man from the Renaissance, Michelangelo Bonarotti, who said, the greater danger for most of us lies not in setting our aim too high and falling short, but in setting our aim too low and achieving our mark. Regarding the Della Pietras and the Parsis, I have very little worry that their sights and accomplishments are being set too low. And finally, a quote from another famous and wise scientist of our age, and very appropriate for some of the people who you heard from today. I truly hope that you all live long and prosper. Thank you so much, and enjoy the reception. <laughs>